Okay, I want to solve this problem from chapter 7.5. It's sort of like the uh, apex of the manipulation of uh, radicals in fractions. And the instructions tell us here to rationalize. Rationalize the denominator. Now I notice I already have a ratio. Uh, basically ratio means a fraction. So what are they talking about when they say rationalize the den denominator? Well they want us to get all the square roots and the cube roots, what's ever down there, out of the, out of the denominator of the fraction. And we're going to use a, a slick trick for doing that that harks back to something we learned in chapter 5. Now, this is simply a property of numbers. And human beings notice this property and they've used it like a tool to great effect. It's one of the most important moves in, in all algebra and it's called the difference of two squares. Essentially what it says uh, is that if you have two bi binomials that are identical except for the signs you can write, rewrite them as the difference of two squares and you take the first term which is a you square it and then you take the second term which is b and you square it and it's, we're talking about the difference of two squares so that's true for all numbers everywhere and every when so for example if I had 10 minus 5 as one binomial and 10 plus 5 as the other binomial, I can rewrite that as the first term squared minus the second term squared. Now why you'd want to do that is because uh, in a lot of problems this is a shortcut or a path to the final solution. At any rate, let's just check the math to be sure and to verify in everybody's brain that this property of numbers is indeed true at least for 10 and 5. Of course it's true for all numbers. Here we have 10 minus 5 which is 5. Here we have 10 plus 5 which is 15. So the left hand side is going to evaluate to 75. Does the right hand side evaluate to 75? 100 minus 25 is indeed 75. So this property of numbers is going to be used in the, this situation here. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply the fraction top and bottom by the same thing. We're going to parenthesize the bottom so that it becomes a uh, clearer case of a binomial. And we're going to multiply top and bottom by what's called, in this case, the conjugate. In other words, we're going to create a binomial identical to that one, except it's going to differ in its sign. This, in chapter 7, this idea is called the conjugate. So we're going to multiply the existing binomial by its conjugate. And of course I need to do the same thing upstairs to maintain balance within the fraction. So on top we multiply straight across and we have this. Square root of a times the binomial square root of a minus the square root of b. On the bottom we have this difference of squares idea. And it says that we could take the first term squared minus the second term squared. Now I'm hoping you see what happens here on the bottom. The top for now I'm going to leave it in this factored form. I'm not going to do the distribution. I'm going to leave it like this. On the bottom now we have a square root of a times the square root of a which is a minus the square root of b times the square root of b which is b. Now notice we have cleared the denominator of square roots. And so in effect we're done and we can box this. This is our answer. Now it's true you could go ahead and do this distribution but I'm not sure. Let's do it. I'm not sure if this is any prettier an answer. The square root of a times the square root of a is a. The square root of a times the square root of b is going to give us, since the indexes are the same, I could write it under one radical, that. And on, on bottom a minus b. But this is no cleaner form, I think, than this, which is the preferred form, and I suspect is probably the answer in the back of the book. One last, one last thing. I wanted to take a look at this idea right here. And um, I'm going to write it in, it's written as a uh, square right now. I'm going to write it in longhand style, which is like this, square root of a squared. And now, since the indexes are the same, I'm going to go to what I call one house, which is like this, a times a or a squared. 
Now I just want to cement some ideas down here. Um, the square root undoes all squares. So in effect, this is a cancel problem right here. The square root will undo the square, and we're left with simply a. So technically, that's the algebra behind the move that says radical a times radical a is equal to b a, and radical b times radical b is equal to b. Uh, so there you go. Here's our answer, and here's our answer. I hope that helps.